Great, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this afternoon's Burn 360 Cloud Connect virtual event. Thank you all for joining. Um, for those of you who joined on time or who joined earlier, um, thank you for being on time and thank you for bearing with us just whilst we sort out some of our audio issues between the panelists. I'd like to kick off just by introducing myself, Yanni Fulgun. I will be your host for the session today. I find it quite strange to sit in a room and basically present to myself. So I thought, you know, at least you can have an idea of what I look like. At the moment, I'm wearing a robe, so that's why we're not doing um, videos on at the moment. I head up the professional services team at Baker Baines. I've worked on various different BIM 360 implementations and a couple of different projects for different types of clients, both from a BIM 360 design um, and docs point of view. In my previous life, I used to be a Revit architecture training, so I do have a fair amount of experience in Revit architecture. Don't ask me too many detailed questions about the MEP site, though. I did my national diploma in interior design at UJ, and then after that, um, did a certificate in project management at UNISA. In my office, I'm known as the BIM Queen, which is a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek title that um, I, I took up and I now wear with pride. And then whilst I'm sitting here presenting, it's important for you to at least you know, get a little bit of a, of a visual of what I look like. And I talk with my hands. So even when I'm presenting to my computer, I'm still quite animated. <laughs> In terms of today's agenda, I'm just going to kick us off by running through just a little bit of a Baker Baines introduction. I understand that most of you who have joined are already familiar with us and the type of work that we do, but I'm just going to touch on that. Then also just to touch on BIM 360 docs and design, I know that there's often some confusion between what functionality is in the one and what is in the other and what is the correct kind of place and application for the tool. So I will be briefly touching on that. But I guess the reason that we are all here is really for our virtual panel discussion where we speak to the four professionals who have joined us today and get their thoughts and input around the use of the BIM 360 application, both before um, our national lockdown and during it and hopefully continuing after. We will also allow a question and answer session. That is where... Hello. There you go. And I think we can hear Liesl now. Hello. Good. Great. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Wonderful, guys. So that means that we have audio working for all our panelists. Liesl, welcome. I was just running um, through, the, through the rest of the agenda for us. So panelists, well run through the agenda and the introduction. If you can just keep yourself on mute. And then as soon as we get into the meat of the presentation, you can all go or because I guess everyone's really here to uh, hear your thoughts. Great. So then, like I mentioned, after we've completed the virtual panel discussion, we will allow a question and answer session. So for the delegates on our um, call this afternoon, you will have an opportunity to ask questions or if it's perhaps not a question that you want to add, but really just to make a comment, we will allow for that. If you need to go to webinar, go to webinar has a questions box where you can submit those questions and we'll address that. And then just from a closing point of view, we'll just summarize what has been um, said during the virtual panel discussion and then look at some next steps. So who's Baker Baines? Uh, in the last five years, we've grown quite a bit from being um, what was a couple of years ago, just a, a Autodesk reseller, to really now being an organization who helps solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, ultimately helping them to design and make a better world. And we do this throughout the four different aspects that we focus on within our business. Firstly, it's all for us and specifically for me from a services team point of view around business process uh, improvements. A lot of the types of things that we are going to touch today is around how your traditional processes would have changed and had to adapt and improve in 2020. 
we are part of the Autodesk Select Service Provider Network and also on the Services Marketplace. Basically what that means is we've got their stamp of approval to deliver consulting services. Then our survey and design hardware. Some of you from an AEC point of view might have come across these different types of technology, but this is really where we look at a scan to BIM workflow where you can capture as bolts and do some laser scanning. Then I think what we're all quite familiar with is the design software side. We are partnered with Autodesk as well as IDAS, ClearEdge and Adobar for some structural rebar detailing. And then we are very passionate about blended learning where we combine classroom training with our um, online e-learning training platform as well as customized training and training that's specifically tailored to project needs. We play a variety of different industries and what I always find quite fascinating is that if we have a look at something like BIM 360, it essentially touches on a lot of these different industries and we're seeing more and more um, integration and overlap between things like um, process plant, civil, bull, and even some manufacturing coming into play. Our approach to software implementation and consulting is all built around iAdopt. I think most of you would have heard me talk or Richard talk, anyone else from Baker Baines talk about iAdopt quite a lot. But I guess from a client point of view, it's not so much about iAdopt, but really around what that gives for you. So we've developed this over um, a couple of years and ultimately iAdopt helps our customers to develop and implement digital strategies look at these different types of business processes and workflows to see how we can improve that and help them adopt technology so that you don't have a, a tool sitting in your toolbox that you're not actively using. Our consulting methodology really focuses on solving the problem or the purpose for the engagement and we want to achieve tangible outcomes out of that and this goes far beyond the CAD environment. Some of the BIM 360 work that you might have dealt with um, personally, as well as some of the members from our panel, goes far beyond the traditional CAD environment and we start including people from a QS and project manager and owner operator stage. Throughout this process of assessing, educating and consulting on the people, the processes and the technology, ultimately we are here to um, drive change and that's why we also include a change management component for our larger types of engagements from a Baker Baines consulting point of view. Then I wanted to just quickly have a look at 2020 and the year so far. I'm sure plenty of you can agree with me that can we just kind of like fast forward until December and get this year over and done with because with 2020 came a lot of challenges, things that we could not have imagined uh, a couple of years before. I saw a joke that someone had posted on LinkedIn to say, if anyone was asked five years ago in an interview, where do you see yourself in five years being 2020? I bet you all gave the wrong answer. So with 2020, you know, it really was the year for working from home. Uh, a lot of us had to adapt in terms of setting up workspaces as a home, trying to keep our animals and, and partners and, and kids quiet in the background. And really just getting into into a new rhythm from a work from home point of view and with that it brought a lot of other type of of connection and staying in touch with your team issues we had to so far i think specifically during this lockdown had a need to stay connected more than ever now you know you can't kind of overhear the other telephone conversations happening in your office or you can't quickly jump up and and walk into the room next to you to have a discussion with someone else so we had this need to stay connected even while you were sitting at home in terms of what was going on. And with the lockdown, we've all seen this as everyone, I think, had to look at ways to um, start saving some costs or start uh, cutting down costs, both from a business point of view as well in our personal capacities. We are all looking at ways to, um, to survive and you know, keep the doors open throughout this lockdown that has impacted the economy, uh, economy a lot. And then ultimately, I guess also specifically for the people who are on um, our virtual event today is we had to keep designing. 
even though construction was closed, I did not speak to any one of my clients who said, you know, we are also closed. Everyone said, we're, we have to keep designing and we have to kind of keep the doors open and continue our work with as much normal as possible. So these different challenges, I think, have um, affected all of us and not just us in South Africa, but really this was something that was on a, on a global level. And from an Autodesk point of view, they wanted to try to see, you know, how can they help customers to address certain of these aspects? And that is where they introduced the Autodesk Extended Access Program. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Autodesk Extended Access Program, it was something that uh, Autodesk had launched specifically to, you know, help people with this new reality of working remotely. And the Autodesk Extended Access Program was basically free extended access or um, an, an extended trial period for several of their cloud collaboration products, including BIM 360 Docs, BIM 360 Design, and then a variety of others. So Fusion 360 and Team, um, AutoCAD Web and Mobile and Shotgun. You might be less familiar with those because they're not, um, those other types of technologies don't play a big part in the architecture and engineering and construction space. This program was launched in April and originally it was available until the end of May and then Autodesk actually extended it until the end of June, which I think helped us all quite a bit. So that is just to give you a little bit of background around the Autodesk Extended Access Program that will be coming to an end quite soon. From a BIM 360 um, point of view, I, I hope that a lot of us are already quite familiar with the platform, but I think because it, it is slightly different to the traditional Autodesk offering, there are a couple of confusions around what's included in this one, and if I have this one, can it also give me that functionality? So I thought it would be good for us to just quickly touch on an overview of BIM 360 so that we're all on the same page. So the BIM 360 platform is really built around document management and then adds functionalities that takes you right from the design stage of a project over to handover. So we see things like um, the ability to do clash detections, you know, we've got our tasks and defects, we can do health and safety, there's quite a big project management plan in it, as well as costing can be integrated to it. So it ultimately acts as a common data environment for all of these different um, professionals and individuals on a project to stay connected. And it's all built on project data and an open source platforming program called Autodesk Forge. In my experience, the reason that we find BIM 360 has been quite well um, adopted and has been quite popular in the last couple of months is that specifically now, like I mentioned, it helps us all stay connected, but it helps us stay connected in a secure, um, in a secure manner. We are all sometimes still a little bit skeptical about putting information on, um, on the cloud or making sure that other people can't see and access and, and fiddle with the data that we give them. So this platform has, um, you know, keeps your data in a secure place and it's integrated. It's integrated with different types of um, data information. We've seen other types of cloud platforms that we use to share our Excel spreadsheets and other types of documents, but Burn360 is specifically built for the design world where it integrates those types of um, model authoring software that a lot of us use on a daily basis. From a BIM 360 entitlement, and this is typically where, where people go, oh, okay, this one is part of that one. So BIM 360 docs, the row that you see at the bottom of the page, is the foundation that the BIM 360 portfolio is built on top of. So BIM 360 docs, firstly, it has unlimited storage, which is always a great thing. I often have people ask, you know, what's the storage, um, what's the storage limit? This is where we do our document management. And then built on top of BIM 360 docs, is BIM 360 design. And like I mentioned, once you have a look at BIM 360 design coordinate or build, which are those three columns, they all include BIM 360 docs. For those who have heard BIM 360 before, coordinate used to be glue and build used to be field. So a couple of renaming that's happened in, in the Autodesk world. BIM 360 docs, like I, like I mentioned, this is the cloud collaboration 
and single data repository from a BIM 360 point of view. We have controlled publishing and viewing and sharing of information that allows us to do our version control and version tracking. It deals with both 2D and 3D markups and file formats, and it's available on both Android and iOS, which is great for, you know, not everyone uh, are so pro Apple like I might be. So it's great that it's an Android as well. And then from a BIN360 design point of view, this is really where it builds on top of Docs and it looks at the cloud work sharing. So we can co-author our Revit models in real time. Um, easiest way that I always explain this to people, it's like your Revit work sharing in the cloud. BIM360 design has also been improved and developed quite a, quite a bit in the last couple of months. It now supports civil 3D and plant 3D workflows as well. So with this, you can still continue with your work sharing from a remote location and having those central documents on the cloud. We can track and coordinate different packages of information and visualize the changes between versions that other professionals are sharing with us. I always like putting up this workflow site to give someone kind of the, the bigger idea of the BIM 360 docs environment. What you see in front of you is the overall workflow from a BIM 360 portfolio point of view, and then highlighting the functionality that's part of docs. So it's an authoring tool. We can do our reviews, publish documents, do document approvals, and there's some reporting and um, analytics in it. Everything that's in, in light blue is a part of a bigger BIM 360 um, portfolio. Then if we move on to BIM 360 design, this is where you see these functionalities are extended slightly, where now we can start doing our Revit work sharing and publishing um, to BIM 360. We can create and share and consume packages with one another between the different disciplines. Now, with that being said, and with me doing most of the talking, and now I'm going to hand over to the panel, I wanted to jump into our panel discussion. Our panel discussion, we have four, three lovely ladies and one lovely gentleman joining us today. Um, I'm going to hand over to them to introduce themselves. And then for whilst we have the, the panel discussion, there won't be wonderful visuals. You get to see all their pretty faces and hopefully listen and um, start typing in those questions. So I'm going to, you know, Carl, since you're the only engineer under um, in, in amongst all the different architects, I'm going to hand over to you first to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about the work that you do at Lombard Consulting. Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time with, uh, to join us today. Uh, my name is Carl Petier. I'm a design engineer and director at Lombard Consulting Engineers. We specifically concentrate on mechanical and electrical building services um, uh, with regards to, to any type of building, industrial, hospitality, residential. Um, our main focus lately has been on hospitals, which is a primarily service-driven uh, building. Um, and in a case where you've got numerous stakeholders playing their part in a, a single project, we find that a, a common data environment or a CDE, um, in this case would be BIM 360, um, plays a, a vital role in ensuring that the, the information being shared is always up to date and current. Um, yeah, so that's that's it from my side and how we use it. Great. Uh, thanks, Carl. Um, Sarah, can you introduce yourself to us, please? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sarah Treux, Gap Architects and Urban Designers. As the name says, we are both architects and urban designers. Our urban design doesn't uh, really use AutoCAD and Revit much at this stage, but architecture very much so. And um, you know, our scale of work is anything from high-end residential, residential estates, hospitality, um, education to a huge degree at the moment, um, hospitals, um, a lot of government and city work. So it's it's very varied. Yeah, at the moment we're all working from home in Cape Town, an office of 50, in Johannesburg, an office of 35, um, and 100% working from home. So that's where Autodesk came to the party and BIM 360 has helped tremendously. Great, thank you, Sarah. Madeleine. 
Afternoon, everybody. Um, Madeleine Lowe from GLH Architects. Um, we really, we've been um, in a privileged position to work on a lot of uh, head offices for for banks, and we really drive into the commercial, you know, office space. But we've also done, you know, um, everything from hospitals to you know private schools and um, um, high-rise residential office, uh, uh, you know, blocks which has a lot of challenges with the amount of services that go into them. And that's where we found that, uh, you know, working in a in a modeled environment really benefits us. Um, you know, I play a role of, of leading projects, um, but I also have the privilege of leading uh, our BIM side in the office. So I'm not a BIM manager, but really just a BIM lead and just driving that process and implementation and adoption, you know, in our office. Great, thanks, Elaine. Liesl. Liesl, can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, can you hear me now? That's it. There you go, Liesl. <laughs> Good. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Liesl from TB3 Architects. I'm mainly working on hospitals at the moment. The rest of the office are mainly doing res high-end high residential um, housing. And there's a couple of office blocks going out of the office at the moment and working with the university. There's a couple of um, buildings I've been doing there for them at the moment. Um, the office is working 100% from the, from from their homes at the moment. Um, I'm on the leading side of the BIM in the office, I'm trying to help out everybody um, with all their glitches, being working at home. Um, that's basically it from my side. Great, Liesl, while, while you're chatting and you're off mute, um, okay. prior to the national lockdown, prior to the national mm -hmm. lockdown, how we sharing um, project information and doing your Revit collaboration? At the moment, um, we uh, with BIM 360, um, we are sharing our models with the other architects that's in Joburg at the moment. Um, that's how we collaborate our little office block that we are busy working on at the moment. Um, mainly, that's how we share our model at the moment on BIM 360. Um, design, collaborate, the extended platform. Great, thanks. And um, and Sarah, from a gap point of view, how were you working before the national lockdown in terms of Revit collaboration and, and sharing of project documentation? Yeah, so be before lockdown, um, obviously, uh, everyone in Cape Town was in the office, all except one. We had one working from Thailand, but everybody else was in the office in Cape Town. And um, all models were held on our server and everybody worked collaboratively into those models. So we've all used work sharing um, always. And so we have a number of people working on every project. The person sitting in Thailand at that stage would do pieces of work on pieces of model and share it back to Cape Town. So we we did it via Dropbox, etc. But for one person that worked. Um, what we find our Joburg office um, worked the same way, except they tend to only have one person working on a model at a, at, the, at a time. So they have work sharing sort of set up, but they never work on a model at the same time. So when lockdown happened, it changed Cape Town a lot more than Johannesburg. They've been able to carry on the way they were. Whereas Cape Town, we had to find a solution to be able to carry on our work sharing while sitting in different places. Great, thanks, Sarah. And and Carl, from your side, how did Lombard Consulting Engineers had to um, adapt in terms of working remotely, if at all? Perhaps you were set up already. So we've been fortunate in that case. Um, we've had prior projects that ran on BIM 360 all the way through. Um, there were numerous sites happening at the same time with the same BIM coordinator. So luckily that gave us the flexibility of having one person that could manage all three sites simultaneously um, without actually having to be 
on site to tie into a local server. Um, in the office, we still use the, the local file sharing, um, but as we all know, that uh, comes with its own issues when, when having to work from home. Um, so luckily being set up already in the, the BIM360 environment enabled us to just actually quite seamlessly just transfer everything into the cloud and you know, it's business as usual for us. Great. Um, now, Madeleine, I know that um, you guys looked at a couple of different ways for doing your Revit collaboration during lockdown. What are some of the things that you explore to address that? Okay, so, I mean, we really, we, we did use BIM 360 Docs to a degree beforehand, um, but it was really actually on one project that uh, had a, a really large team, so it, it worked for us there. But uh, other than that, we were using all sorts, you know, um, whatever made the job work at that point. I have to say that, you know, everything from Dropbox and we transferred to SharePoint and, and Autodesk Vault, um, you know, we, we use different platforms, you know, for different projects, even sometimes. So it, you can hear that, you know, we, we really made it work, you know, whatever worked for a project team. Um, but we did also in lockdown, what we chose to do was actually to, have remote access to our desktops in the in, in the in the office. We do have someone who, who could you know go into the office. They literally right next to the office. So if something went wrong, they could you know that they could make a, a little fix to it. Um, but we were fortunate that nothing really actually broke in the time. So we we really actually we using we using things like forty clients uh, to have a remote connection back to our more powerful computers back in the office. Which means we all really still work on central files in the in the office. Uh, we just have screens in our at our home. So and then on top of that, we do have been 360, but that's really for the larger team. As an office, we chose to 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 be yeah, on remotely connect to back to our server, and it's it's worked quite well, except for the odd uh, power outage, which the um, <laughs> uh, ESCOM has saved us right now. most of it. Yes, right. which I'm experiencing right now, but I don't think it's, you know, it's that's probably it. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Liesl, now I understand from a TVP point of view, you guys started using um, BIM360 design on the remote extended access program. What um, were, you, were you exposed to BIM360 before, before the lockdown in this program? Were you familiar with it or, or not? From my from my side, I never were, was able to work on Vim 360. No, I we never worked on Vim 360. I know that there was one project in the office that did make use of the Vim 360 platform, um, but other than that, we basically just work from our server in the office, and um, that's basically it. Great. Yeah. So I, I, the, lock, the lockdown was really the the changing or, or the driving force for you guys in terms of um, getting onto that. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Great. Sarah, from your side, I'd be interested to know what were your kind of initial thoughts around this collaboration um, solution, BIM 360 design, before you had a chance to actually, you know, get your hands in on it. Well, it, it, it also came about, you know, after testing every other available resource. We, um, we, it, it, lockdown came at a strange time. I was already in isolation, um, having come from the UK um, from holiday and was put into self-isolation. Then lockdown happened and we had to get all staff out of the office. We and that's moving 50 people while I wasn't in the office. I'm IT manager, so that became my responsibility. Um, and most staff do not have computers at home, so the the solution described elsewhere here um, didn't work for us. In fact, a lot of them didn't even have internet at home. We have a lot of people that had had absolutely nothing but their cell phone. So that's a huge challenge and it wasn't an option to just remote desktop into the office. We do have a number of hubs in the office to do that um, from, from any PC, but most people took their PCs or laptops home to work from home. Then the challenge was to get access to our models and we were, we were um, 
connecting to our server via VPN. And um, Revit via VPN is a disaster. So we, we'd used docs before. We, we're using docs on other projects, which are always hosted by the engineers, be it WSP, be it whoever that are holding um, the docs. So we've had access in that way, but never to build to the full BIM 360. Um, and we, we tried everything, um, also, you know, OneDrives and, and Google Drives and uh, FTP sites and, and every other available platform, we really tested everything. And in the end, we we went BIM 360 and it, it, it changed everything. You know, it uses so much less data, it's so much faster, it's instant, you're not transferring that much data each time. So even people on LTE connections at home were able to work on Revit where they were not before. Um, and it, it really revolutionized everything for us. And I think even if some people go back to the office, um, we will always keep BIM 360 with our large models. Um, you know, we we don't have small projects; they're very large. So for people to be working on those, even people with fiber, we're really, really battling with Dropbox and OneDrives and and with VPN. Um, so even fiber wasn't cutting it. But as soon as you use BIM 360, it didn't matter which connection you had. You know, LTE it takes a bit longer. Maybe you update overnight. It's not the end of the world. People on fiber update whenever they want to, um, and it, it was the best solution. Great, Sarah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that it worked so well for you. Um, I, I certainly find that some of our other customers have had the same experiences around that. Carl, mm. Sarah had mentioned that they used some BIM 360 uh, docs before that was mostly hosted by, by the engineers. From your side, I know that your team has used BIM 360 um, even before the lockdown. Was that more being a part of other projects that you were invited to, or uh, were they projects that you kind of ran with from a BIM360 point of view? Um, so when, when the project initially started, we, we, we faced the issue, as I said previously, with having one, one BIM coordinator having to manage uh, over three sites. So we did our homework. We looked at various options of how we can how we can um, make it easier for everyone. Um, in, in terms of having, you've got one BIM coordinator, three sites, but on each site you've still got a, a local BIM modeler, and to to facilitate communication in between those three um, proved to be actually quite a quite a challenge, um, especially as we were working on the the contractor side and not the design side for that specific project. Uh, the information requested was, you know, they, they say they want it now, but actually they wanted it yesterday. So you can't sit and wait to travel between sites, get connected to the local server, do your alterations, and then carry on. Um, so from that point of view, we drove it um, on the the BIM 360 side um, for for our our uh, ease of of information access, um, and we found it it actually worked really well. Um, the nice thing was as well, the, the information being published wasn't necessarily the, the live model you're working on. You could choose specifically what you wanted to publish and what you wanted to show at that specific time. Um, so we, we drove it. Um, we've been part of one or two other projects where it was hosted by the engineers. Um, in, in general, it does seem to be a, a trend that it's, it's hosted by the engineers as, as a central hub. Great. We should have had more engineers on this panel. Then. Um, sounds like good, it. It's good to hear. And what it what it sounds like is, you know, from your side, you really used it to have that kind of anywhere, anytime access to the information. Um, Madeleine, I know that that uh, from a gel edge point of view, you've been using BIM 360 docs on a specific large project and you've been using it for a while now. Uh, I think from your side, it would be nice to know, you know, knowing what you know today about BIM 360 docs, if you had to take a look back, you know, eight months before, what were some of the things that you would have liked to know before you jumped into using the application? So, Johnny, you always want to know more when you look back, <laughs> you know, and that's starting <laughs> point. Um, I I think the main thing for me, you know, knowing what I know exactly today and even yesterday in a conversation that we had with Autodesk is, is um, you know, the, 
the difference on BIM 360 Docs, for example, and Docs is the platform for everything, so everything will look the same in this way. But um, the the reasoning behind the two default uh, uh, folders that they start you off with, which is plans and project files, what we've learned, and it's been hmm, it's been steep and it's been a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a pain, and we we find ourselves having to find workarounds at this point. Because what happens is when you upload information to plans, it actually extracts it in a different way than when you upload plans to a project file. And we, in the beginning, we didn't understand exactly what the difference was between those things. So we started uploading information. Some people could upload it. Some people, it had, you know, it split files into two um, different documents, even for a drawing. Um, for some of it, it's even split, uh, you know, PDFs into, you know, completely separate, like a 40 page PDF that into, you know, 40 separate pages. So that's a maddening thing. And we eventually realized, you know, how, how it works and what, what Autodesk planning was. Well, we actually still don't understand the planning, to be honest, but um, how the two folders are set up differently. Um, and where we find ourselves now, for example, is we, we realize that we actually need to move some of the information into another folder. And it's it's still actually um, it, it's actually not possible. So that's a workaround we need to 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 find a solution, you know, for. So in the beginning, if I knew that in the beginning, I think we would have set our folder structure. You know, we would have we would have planned it in a in a different way. I mean, that's that's definitely. I think that's the main thing for me right now. And that's probably because we don't have a clear solution going forward immediately. Um, so it's in the forefront of my mind. <laughs> I think that's good feedback. That's good feedback for our attendees to also take into account. Um, Liesl, from your side, what are some of the, the challenges that you faced with using the BIM 360 platform, if any? <laughs> challenges is how to operate. For me, in the beginning, I didn't know how to upload it. I didn't know how to collaborate. I didn't know how to get the model onto the extended platform. Um, when I had to download the model for our consultants, um, it was a couple of them having issues. So I had to download the model. I tried to publish it. Or it's just, it was endless. I was completely lost. Um, it was um, time consuming, you know, in a way. Um, yeah. Um, what what else? There was a couple of issues with the other consultant or the other architect that we work with. He, um, they, all of a sudden, he, um, upgraded the model from 2019 to 2020, and all of a sudden, I couldn't work in in that model. Um, the model was always saved under BIM docs. And all of a sudden, I couldn't open up the model. Um, I couldn't work. And there was like more than a week, week and a half, that I actually worked remotely on a separate model until Autodesk in the UK actually found it up and we solved it. It was apparently that you can't um, upgrade a model from in the platform. So I had to, we need to we had to create a new folder within the um, BIM 360 design collaboration platform. Um, it's a very powerful platform, but if you don't know what's going on there, it's, it's a, it was a nightmare for me in the beginning. Um, I'm trying to, at the moment, working on a small hospital at the moment, um, trying to find my way with it. And every day is like a new learning curve. You know, every day you learn new stuff. You know, and, and, I'm enjoying working with it at the moment, but in the beginning, I was it was a nightmare. I really, <laughs> it wasn't a pleasure to work with. But like I said, each day it's it's getting better, and you know, knowing what to do and how to do it, it's it's not that bad. Liesl, I think just as a as a follow up question, and, and Sarah, perhaps you found something similar because I think both of both of you were in a situation where you had to adapt and change processes quite quickly do you think mm. that uh, you know having had some more more time or perhaps training and a little bit more 
um, of, a, of a strategy for the implementation of BIM 360 docs that it would have been an easier process for you? From my side, definitely, you know, if training would have helped a, a bit. I think at the moment, YouTube and is my best <laughs> way of finding out stuff. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, training would, would have helped, definitely. Would you, Sarah, would you agree that um, in terms of, of implementing BIM 360, you know, having a little bit more time to to think it through and get some training in place would make the, the process easier? You'd, you'd always like to say yes, but you know, for, and, and I don't even want to say months, I would gladly actually say years, probably for two years. We talked about getting onto BIM 360 um, for collaboration, at least for docs, you know, and we were using it with engineers and are we sure we're not using it to its maximum potential and we really need training. And I, I think the, the rest of your team at Baker Baines know how many times we asked about training and we need to get training before we buy seats. And, you know, and, and this really went on a long time. But often there's nothing like jumping in with both feet. And in this case, we were forced. So we were forced into the situation and we had to learn on the fly. And you find that you you figure it out as you go um luckily we have google we have youtube we have baker baines always um at our side so it's not that hard and yes training would always be good but i think that you know it's like going for revit training you go for your revit training but if you don't come back into the office and jump into a project immediately um it's useless and you'll find that six months down the line, you know nothing about Revit. It's exactly the same thing. But if you just jumped into it and you learn as you go, you learn everything you need. So yes, we still think there's functionality we don't know. And in that respect, training would be useful. But um, but procrastination is 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 the key and, and we'll always delay that. So in this, in this instance, um, necessity, um, was the best solution and that's what's got us into the platform you know and we figured it out as we went the, the first biggest challenge was that we were not able to upload our, ma our models and collaborate because we were all running um, Revit 2019 we'd like to try and keep everybody on the same platform and for all our, our consultants but in order to work share our models and collaborate within BIM 360 design we had to upgrade everybody to River 2020. Now, had I known that before they all left the office and went onto LTE connections and home fiber connections, I really would have upgraded them beforehand because trying to upgrade them to 2020 on their connections at home was a, a nightmare and it took a lot of time. So we had downtime then. That was our worst downtime was actually getting everybody onto 2020. But um, as soon as everybody was on 2020 and plugged into BIM 360, I must say it's been smooth sailing. I have two users that I've, they are my sort of hub admins um, who create the projects on BIM 360 and assign the users. Um, and from there on, everybody's been able to upload their model and use it as, as needed. We're not using BIM 360 docs as we could, but also because we didn't have projects on site. It was all documentation, design and documentation. So um, the 360 docs has taken a bit of a back seat, except for marking up for our team itself, but not for issuing and um, that sort of sharing, just, just for ourselves and for marking up. But, um, but it's been great and I, and I think it's been quite smooth, even with our training. Great, thanks, Sarah. I think that's very valuable in, uh, information, specifically for any of the other attendees who's online and you know perhaps considering it to know that you know if you want to go that route maybe upgrade your models before um Absolutely. Carl from your side what what advice would you give to you know other professionals who are currently considering a, a BIM 360 docs or design platform um uh, right at the very start in, yeah, in it's a good setting <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say right at the very start, um, maybe training is not the way to go, as as Sarah said there. Um, you know, bump your head a few times; it's it's going to be the quickest way you're going to learn. Um, 
as that being said, setting up BIM 360 at the get go can be quite a, a complicated process um, in terms of the, the user creation, the hub creation, um, and all of that. So having someone close, or not close by, but someone that you can uh, call up or, or ask these questions like Baker Baines fulfills that role for me, um, that's very, very valuable. I mean, I had nightmares trying to get the hubs uh, all, all sorted and, and functioning. And as soon as I, uh, I got stuck, just got on the phone. Within 20 minutes, I was connected via Baker Baines to Autodesk in the US. And I'd say half an hour later, it was all sorted. Um, so uh, yeah, right at the start, don't don't be afraid to ask for help if you don't understand it. Um, but once the, the, the product is up and running, bump your head a few times learn learn the hard way i mean once once you've gone that route it's like riding a bike you're not going to forget it um once you've understood it and you've got a general understanding of it then yes i would say go for for some form of training just to to show you the added uh, functionality of the software um yeah, the nice thing about it is that you don't need to use all the functionality or know everything it can do um but it, it's customizable so that it, it works for you. You don't need to use it the same way your your um, colleagues in, in another company are using it. You you tailor it to to suit your needs and to to fit into the way you work. Great, thanks for that, Paul. So I think if I can, what I'm what I'm hearing in terms of our panel's experience is that it's it's possibly not training that's as important, but maybe some some guidance in those initial initial kind of like setup stages to just to help you get going and then really as with anything at least i believe is it's a it's a practice makes perfect you know use it break it see see how ne you need to um change a couple of things to make it work for you madlena i hope you're still online with us and and if you are i'd yeah. like to hear from your side what advice would you give to, to anyone considering bim 360 docs for a project you know, we, the, my, you know, while we're on training, I think, you know, from my side, we we did actually strongly advocate for an entire team to go on training because, um, you know, us using BIM 360 Docs was a project-specific solution, and it's something that our clients actually asked us um, to do. They said, what common data exchange platform are we going to use? Will it be an FTP site? Will it be, are you going to try managing it over Dropbox or just some data silo? What are we going to use? And by the way, you know, they, they, so they prescribed to us a certain functionality. You know, they want to be able to, um, you know, have version control, but also be able to track information and see who has uploaded and downloaded information. So I advised our client was actually, let's look at BIM 360 and at the very least, you know, use docs. And for that reason, we ended up uh, having a client actually buy uh, the, the subscription packages. And we also then motivated for that, for the entire team, including the client, uh, to then, you know, go for training. And what this did for us um, is I think put everybody on the same page. And as a team, we actually decided how we're gonna manage the project. And I think that part of training was extremely useful. You know, if, if we didn't go through that process of, of um, and it was a very collaborative process, although, you know, you guys as Baker Baines actually, you know, you drove it in a, in, a, in a very strong way and you helped us set up, you know, our BIM execution plans in that process as well. But that has given us a very good platform, you know, a starting point, you know, um, it gives you a, a, you know, a good um, uh, out of the blocks, you know, and then we just have to manage it team it also helped us to you know because when you have 50 people on a team um you know and the uh, your client decides to make the architect the account admin and the project admin on BIM 360 uh you can all of a sudden be inundated with BIM 360 queries instead of being able to focus on your job which is really prioritizing the architecture part of things so in that way i would i would i would advocate for a degree of training especially if you if you want to get an entire team on board and you're not sure where everybody is. some people might have some experience and some may be you know nothing so to get everybody on the same playing field 
training helps you a whole lot with that and setting up your project standards um, it really did us did us a favor there and then also being our support on the project if you have a baker Baines who everybody phones you guys instead of phoning the architect um, you know that that really that really helps us out I mean we I would um, some advice just um, other than that is to understand your workflows and how it might influence your workflows going into it um, you know really your, your folder structure, um, drawing registers, uh, transmittals, you know, how you're going to manage those things. And if you still, if you want to manage them on, on BIM 360, or do you still use your old, you know, your, your, your old office protocols and just upload things like, like drawing registers, which would be my advice right now to actually just, just stick to those processes and upload it to, to BIM. So, I mean, a, a mouthful. I think I'll stop there. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry. Training, Thanks, yes, there is a value. There's a place. There's a place for it. But definitely, you learn Thanks, the most Monday. once you start your head, yeah. for sure. I, th I think also what what I'm hearing from Madeleine is that perhaps if you are considering something like Win360 to not necessarily consider the traditional form of training, but maybe training that's more collaborative and consultative between what the project wants to achieve or what an organization wants to achieve and look at some strategies and processes. I'm going to, you know, before all our attendees fall asleep because we forget that they don't, don't get to see us in person, for the um, attendees on the line, I'm going to ask you in the interim if you have any questions for our panel, if you want to go and type that into the question box. I'll monitor the question box and then while I monitor the question box, I just wanted to get an understanding from, from our panel and, and maybe Liesl starting from you in, in mm. closing, you know, uh, from a TV3 point of view, do you find that a lot of these processes and ways of working will, will stay the same way as it is, you know, you've set up with the work from home kind of environment and do you think that will continue into the future? Uh, in the foresee future, I definitely see us working from home and staying and then basically bit by bit coming back to the office. But um, the way that we work at the moment, definitely um, seeing that we work in the BIM 360 environment, definitely. Mm. And, and Sarah, from your side, do you think some of the learnings that you've uh, picked up out of the lockdown period and the working from home will continue in the years to come? Um, yes, I think, you know, being forced into this work from home scenario has been um, quite an eye opener for everyone. You know, you often have staff asking, can they work more flexibly? Can they work from home at times, etc.? for whatever reason, travel times or children, whatever. But um, everybody's always been a bit resistant. You know, if you're not sitting at a seat in the office, you're not working. But this has proven to everybody that you are working and it's as productive and it's, um, you know, you gain hours back because you're not sitting in traffic and you're not rushing to meetings across town, etc. But yet you're having those same meetings, you are doing the same amount of work and you're communicating with your staff. Um, so the work from home has been amazing um, and it definitely will continue. We do find that some staff are feeling a little bit detached. They're not sure what's going on with the rest of the office. You know, it comes to how many meetings do you have and how many meetings do you have everybody just to touch base and be a bit more social. But definitely we will start moving back to the office at some stage in a small way, but certainly not in a big way um, for quite a, well, we don't see it ever getting back to the way it was. Um, more of a an office hub with people coming and going, um, which I think is, is, you know, we're in the 21st century, it's the way to go. Great, thanks for that. Uh, I have a, a question coming through and I think, Paul, I'm actually going to direct it to you because I know from a Lombard point of view, you've used BIM 360 prior to the lockdown and did not make use of the extended access program. We have Paul asking that, if you have a look at the cost of BIM 360 and the implementation compared to um, what would you say that in your in your findings that it's it's quite an expensive tool to implement compared to the gains of the production and um, and benefits that you get out of it? 
Um, I don't think necessarily it's the right way of looking at it. Um, don't look at how much it's going to cost you to to uh, apply BIM 360, but look at the costs that can be uh, that can pop up if you don't apply it. Um, in cases of uh, just data management, we're sitting in the office, working, working, working. All of a sudden, the server crashes. We lose all of our data. That's a huge issue. We've got backups and backups and backups, um, but this takes the the local hardware out of the equation. Um, and besides that, uh, the the functionality and the, the the between sites, having one person being able to manage all three sites. Now all of a sudden, I can have one BIM co coordinator on site running three sites instead of having one per site or having that one per one BIM coordinator jumping in between sites uh, constantly. So there's it eliminates the risk of travel. Um, it eliminates the risk of, of uh, running overdue on time. Um, so there's, as, as with anything in life, there's a, a cost associated with it. Um, but I think instead of focusing on what it's going to cost you to go that route, rather look at what it's going to cost you if you don't go that route. Great. Thanks for that. Um, I'm going to now just allow for the poll, of course, from a um, attendee point of view, we want to get some information from you as well. And then while I open up the poll for all the attendees and delegates, I will monitor the question box if you have any other questions could either be for me or for Lizelle, Sarah, Cole, or Madeleine. Great, so the polls are launched. Let's see if this works. Pierre von Sale is asking, um, and I think maybe, Lizelle, I'm going to direct the, direct this question to you. Um, sure. Do you think 360 is suited to smaller teams? I'm not 100% sure about the size of your team, but I know that uh, Sarah and Madeleine are both working with quite big teams. So would you say that BIM360 is suited to smaller teams? For sure, definitely. You know, as um, as soon as you start working from home or remotely, um, you, I can't see other way of of working or collaborating your model. If there's two persons working, you still need that platform to work from. So um, either if you're two or twenty or fifty, it's it's still a way to go. Great, thank you, Nazar. Uh, for the panelists, thank you for uh, answering the poll. There is a second one that I want to also just launch for you guys to go and answer here. And in the meantime, um, Sarah, I'm going to, to uh, ask this question for you from Aveshni. How difficult is it, or how difficult was it to move an existing project into BIM 360 or, or a project that, you know, was perhaps already um, in, a, in a stage two or stage three and then move it over to the BIM 360 platform. Um, yeah, moving an existing project wasn't a problem at all. You can move it at any stage. It certainly doesn't need to be a new project as long as you've got um, you know, a central model, um, as long as someone has access to it and is able to upload the model. Um, there's no hassle at all. It, the, the first upload takes a little bit longer and any further update after that is much quicker. But no problem at all. Once the hub is created for, for that team and that project, it was easy. Great, that's that's good to hear. Um, Cole, I'm going to give you this question. This question is coming from Leon, who I know is a lecturer at PUT, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he's actually specifically asking around BIM 360 and, you know, what kind of strategies do Autodesk, I would imagine, have in place to assist from an educational side for students to be on board with that. But I guess the question really that I want to ask you, because I know you're also very passionate about training, is do you think it would be of benefit if these types of technologies can be incorporated 
um, into tertiary education where we have students coming out of varsity uh, already having a good understanding of BIM 360 cloud platforms. <laughs> I've actually had the same conversation numerous times with numerous people. Um, I do think there's a definite place for it. Um, what I do find is some some tertiary institutions try to be software agnostic, um, so they they don't want to you know choose a specific brand, train their their students in that, um, and then once they now enter the the working field, um, all of a sudden it, it's a, a different side of a different sort of software or something along those lines. Um, but I do think a general basic introduction to the software is not just a uh, a nice to have but is a necessity these days everything we do in construction well not everything but 95 percent of it these days in the designing side is digital so for a student to come out of varsity with no experience in any form of design software it, it, it poses a problem um i've quite often said to to students coming out looking for work um go upskill yourself if i see that there is any form of uh Let's, let's say BIM 360 training or Revit training or anything like that on their CV from day one, they already are head above the rest. Um, so if you generalize that a bit to uh, a, a class of a couple of people, I mean, now, now all of a sudden you've got 100 applicants who, who are looking much better on their CVs from the tertiary institution level already. Um, so 100%, I think that, that this type of training should form part of uh, tertiary, uh, tertiary education. Great, thanks, Carl. It's valuable input. Um, this session is also being recorded, so <laughs> we'll make sure that your your feedback gets into to the relevant hands. For the attendees, I have one last poll question that I'd like you to answer, and then I will also allow just another minute before we wrap things up for more questions, if anyone has any. Great, it looks like we have everyone who answered my last poll question. Um, for all the attendees, thank you very much for also contributing to our poll. I think with us trying to use technology, it's the easiest way to also hear your voices and um, opinions. Great guys, so we're almost actually, let me have a look at the time. Yes, we, we're we've, um, coming towards the end of our session. I want to just thank everyone on the panel for contributing, for adding our, for, you know, giving us the, the input and their thoughts and experiences around this panel. Thank you very much. I'm going to have one last quick, uh, check just to see if anyone has any additional questions for our panel. Um, if you have any other questions for the panel, you're more than welcome to send me some information and I can put you in touch with the relevant party. Then I just wanted to, in, in terms of wrap up, just give you guys an idea of, you know, having listened to all this information and hearing about the Autodesk Extended Access Program and, you know, what kind of things you need to look out for from an implementation point of view, what things worked well, what things might have not worked out so well for our panelists. I wanted to just wrap up by looking at where to from here. If you were a user of the Autodesk Extended Access Program, and I know from the poll that some of you had mentioned that you had used this, is in terms of next steps, there's really two bits that we need to have a look at. Is either download your data from your BIM 360 app by the 30th of June, which is the end date for the Autodesk Extended Access Program, or alternatively, you can consider subscribing to the software to continue with uninterrupted access. With our current lockdown and work from home situation, I know that plenty of us are back at the office, but we're not quite back to, to the way we used to be before. Then secondly, if you are brand new to the BIM360 offering, if you, you know, want to maybe not jump in completely and, and take the approach that, that Sarah suggested, and you maybe want to just, you know, uh, dip a toe in the water, 
I would suggest that you contact us for a product demo. And if you haven't accessed any kind of trial or extended access program before, you can go and sign up for a 30 day trial to, to test it and to see if it works for you. And then I guess ultimately, if you are ready to, to take the leap and jump in, um, you can speak to Baker Baines about some subscription offerings. The BIM360 subscriptions work slightly different than the traditional AutoCAD and Revit. So there are a couple of other things that we need to take into consideration. And I guess also hearing from our panel when we spoke about, you know, what's the best approach? Should we do training? Should we just kind of figure it out as we go? If you are ready to take the leap, I would encourage you to have a discussion with us and consider your implementation approach and options and also perhaps have a look at a pilot project. We've we've heard that, you know, just going for training but never actually being and, and I'm putting this in brackets, forced to use an application, um, often ends up with forgetting what has been trained. So sometimes it's a great idea to just, you know, strategize around how you're going to implement it and, and, and on which specific projects. What I also wanted to just um, share with all of you at Baker Baines, we have a BIM360 design Kickstarter. Our thought process behind the Kickstarter is it's something that is really designed to help you adapt quickly, get up in a, a short amount of time and ultimately be able to work from anywhere and any time. We do also have a Kickstarter for BIM360 Docs, but the um, design one I think is more, more appropriate to mention right now. There are a couple of things included in the BIM360 Docs starter pack. It's just over um, 3,000 Rand you get a BIM360 design hub and project setup. We've heard from the panel that sometimes this original uh, initial setup process of the hub is slightly, slightly tricky. Uh, we also grant you access to 30 days of online training with our online e-learning platform, CAD Learning, and then you get a two hour online consult with one of our BIM, BIM specialists. And this online consult is really not meant to be training, but rather meant to have a look at, you know, what kind of approaches are we going to take to make this system work for us? What types of things do we need to take into consideration? Now, must add in here, terms and conditions do apply. When I say for the Kickstarter, you get a design hub and project setup. I'm not talking about setting up 80 projects with 150 members. This is really um, just from a Kickstarter point of view. And then the software is actually not included in the Kickstarter. That's just to help. Um, to help you get up and running with the application if it is something that you are considering. With that being, um, this brings us ultimately to an end. I encourage all of you to connect with us either with Jackie, who's the head of our BIM technology in the Western Cape, um, or with myself, who head of the professional services team and I'm based in Joburg. I guess now that we're all remote, it doesn't really matter where we're based, but um, please do get in touch with either one of us. You can also engage with us online. The session will be recorded. So if you want to share this with any of your peers or perhaps suggest to someone else, go and, you know, go and have a listen to what Madeleine had to say about plans and project folders. Um, you can share this recording with them. It will be shared on our social media platforms. And guys, thank you very much for thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for our panel for joining us today, for contributing and um, for helping us host this event. If this is something and if this is a format that you enjoy, if you would like to be on future panels or if you have other suggestions about things that we should possibly discuss with some of our industry leaders, please do let us know. Thank you, John. Panel, thank you very much. Attendees, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to just stay online for a couple of minutes longer um, to see if there are any additional questions that come in. But I hope you all enjoyed this and please do get in touch. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.
ended. Mark, I see you have your hand. Yeah. Apologies for not getting to you sooner. I was monitoring the question box. We do have a couple of attendees still online. So if there's anything that you wanted to add, you're more than welcome to do so now. Just wanted to say thank you for a good uh, webinar. Thank you for joining. Have a good one. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. I will be ending the session now and I hope to hear from you soon.